Hey everyone, thank you again for joining me. I'm here to talk about my newest book, What It Means to Be a Man, God's Design for Us in a World Full of Extremes. And uh, in the first video, I talked about why I wrote the book, what I hope to accomplish in writing the book, and hopefully how you can use it, and in the process of using it, how it will transform your life. And today, I want to talk briefly about the first chapter, which is called Archetypes, The Making of Men. Um, in the first chapter, I kind of wanted to set a reference point uh, for men to begin thinking about how they define their life as men, what their type of um, manhood or masculinity looks like, or what they're drawn to. And um, so I talk about the four basic archetypes, and by archetypes, I mean it's uh, essentially a word that means the first type or a uh, um, um, prototype. It's, it's what a guy might emulate his um, manhood or his masculinity after. And so in all of my research, uh, the four same archetypes emerge time and time again. It didn't matter if the author was a Christian or if the author wasn't a Christian. These four archetypes uh, were the ones that everyone talked about. And those four archetypes are um, the king archetype. Um, and the king archetype is uh, a sense of this guy who is a leader, um, that when he's in charge and he rules, things go well in the land. There's a sense of um, um, leadership that is, um, I don't know, that just kind of really emerges from that archetype. And there's a sense of um, a sense of security that emerges out of that type of um, manhood and that type of masculinity. The second is warrior, and the warrior is essentially the archetype where a guy kind of lives by a code. Um, there's a, a, he's, he's, a, he, he's a fighter. He's the one that goes to battle. It's probably the archetype that we see emulated time and time again in our culture or that uh, people are most often drawn to. You see that in the movies, and you see that just kind of in, in life on a daily basis and um, what kind of young boys look up to. The third is the um, sage, and that's basically the wise man or uh, the man who is really good at um, um, seeing things and, and looking at things with, with, a, with, a, with a real sense of discernment. Uh, the fourth is the lover, and that's the guy who's kind of um, really passionate about certain things. I hate to stereotype that, but really passionate about certain things in life and is able to express himself, is able to really um, get in touch with his emotions. Um, those four archetypes um, are the ones, again, that are, are most often talked about. And I want to talk about them so a guy would begin to think about, hey, do I tend to really look at one archetype the most and want to emulate my life after that one archetype? And, and do, maybe do I get stuck in one archetype? And I really wanted to use it as a reference point, I said in the beginning here. And ultimately what I'll write about in the book is that um, as a man, and especially as a man um, following after God, uh, we are not defined by one archetype. That, And what I'll say later in the book is ultimately that what it means to be a man um, has nothing to do with archetypes, but all has to do with our relationship with, with uh, Jesus Christ. And so um, even though I start off talking about archetypes, I want to move beyond that in, in the book discussion. But uh, in the beginning, it's a simple primer that will get you thinking about what an archetype is. Um, with the four archetypes that are most often talked about in our culture and maybe how you fit into those or don't fit into those. And at the end of the chapter, I'll leave you with um, just one kind of challenge to think through, and hopefully that will get the ball rolling here as we enter into this book. Thank you very much, and have a good day.